Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss the quadrature sampling of bandpass signals. To begin with, in my previous video, I discussed the sampling of ideal low pass or baseband signals. As its name itself very clearly states, the low pass sampling theorem is restricted to low pass signals only and is not applicable to bandpass signals. By analyzing the different types of signals available, we note that many of the signals encountered in real world are intrinsically bandpass in nature. Since low pass sampling theorem is not applicable to bandpass signals, we therefore need to find a technique for sampling bandpass signals. One such technique is called the quadrature sampling, which is used for the uniform sampling of bandpass signals. It should be noted, it is for uniform sampling of bandpass signals. In one of the interesting characteristics of the quadrature sampling, we note that it is actually a scheme which is an extension of the low pass sampling theorem. In this scheme, rather than sampling the bandpass signal directly, we at first perform a preparatory operation on the bandpass signal, which will later ease the overall sampling of the bandpass signals. Let us start by considering a bandpass signal G of T, whose spectrum is limited to 2W and centered at Fc. And a illustration of such a frequency spectrum is shown here in figure 1a. The most obvious strategy of representing a bandpass signal is in terms of its in-phase and quadrature phase components, each of which may then be sampled separately. Also, we further assume that the center frequency which is Fc is greater than the W which is the highest frequency component of the bandpass signal. Now we will represent G i of t and G q of t as the in phase and quadrature phase components of the original bandpass signal. Therefore, we can express the bandpass signal G of t in terms of the in phase component G i of t and quadrature phase component G q of t using the equation G of t equals G i of t into cos 2 pi f c t minus G q of t into sin 2 pi f c t. Now that we have represented the bandpass signal in terms of its in phase and quadrature phase components, now let us talk about the generation of G i of t and G q of t from G of t. This is accomplished by using the methodology as shown in the figure 2 here. As per the diagram shown, the in phase component G i of t and the quadrature phase component G q of t may be obtained by multiplying the input signal that is the bandpass signal G of t with cos 2 pi fct and sin 2 pi fct respectively and then passing the multiplication outputs through a suitable low pass filter and this is done in order to remove the sum frequency components after the multiplication. Now since we have assumed that the center frequency of the bandpass signal which is fc is greater than w, we find that the output of the low pass filter which is g i of t here and g q of t here are both low pass signals which are very strictly limited to w that is the value of frequency for g i of t and g q of t are such that it takes only values between minus w to plus w that is minus w is less than f less than w this is illustrated in figure 1b here therefore what we learn from this preparatory operation is that after extracting the g i of t and g q of t from the original signal g of t we find that the spectrum of the in phase and quadrature phase components are strictly band limited and this is exactly what it looks like in figure 1b here. So now that we have the GI of t, GQ of t represented as low pass signals, each of these components may then be sampled using the ideal low pass sampling theorem. That is all I have to now do is to sample this signals that is GI of t, GQ of t by choosing a sampling rate equal to 2 W samples per second. This is because the highest frequency component is W and as per the Nyquist rate, the sampling frequency should be 2 W. This form of sampling is called as quadrature sampling. Coming back to the diagram here, what we have noted is G i of t and G q of t at the outputs of the low pass filter in the upper as well as the lower path, we are going to sample them at the rate 2 W samples per second and this is going to generate the samples of G i of t and G q of t which are represented as G i of n t s and G q of n t s. However, we also should note when we perform this operation, 
there is a scaling factor involved that is we are going to obtain this constant 1 by 2 as well as minus 1 by 2 with respect to g i of n t s and g q of n t s right. So, that is about the generation of g i of t and g q of t. Now, let us continue to discuss how to reconstruct the original bandpass signal g of t from the samples of g i of t as well as g q of t. This is accomplished by using the diagram as shown in figure 3. So, to reconstruct the original bandpass signal from its in phase and quadrature phase samples, we first reconstruct the in phase component g i of t as well as the quadrature phase component g q of t from their respective samples and this is done by multiplying the outputs of the reconstruction filters by cos 2 pi f c t and sin 2 pi f c t respectively and then we are going to add the results as per our previous equation. So, this is the equation I am talking about here. Coming back to the generation of g i of t and g q of t, we already have stated there is a scaling factor involved. However, when we are going to reconstruct g of t from the samples of g i of t and g q of t, we are going to neglect that scaling factor. By doing so, quite inherently we are assuming that there is a loss of information. But since we are going to sample the g i of t and g q of t signals as per the low pass sampling theorem, the reconstructed signal g of t is as good as g of t at the transmitter end and this is with respect to the absolute error that is acceptable during the design. Therefore, to conclude, we note that one of the best methods of sampling a bandpass signal is by using the quadrature sampling theorem. In quadrature sampling, we are going to extract the in phase and quadrature phase components of the bandpass signal which are then going to be a low pass signals and then we are going to perform sampling of these in phase and quadrature phase components using the ideal low pass sampling theorem. By using this particular technique, we are going to perform both sampling as well as reconstruction of the bandpass signal successfully. Well, that is all about the discussion on quadrature sampling theorem. I hope you liked this video. If you did, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.